Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're going to continue our discussion of string functions. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about how we can censor strings essentially, because as you can tell, I'm using very vulgar language. <laughs> and these functions are very useful for all kinds of different things. So even if you're not doing this exact thing, you can think of them more generally because I know they're gonna come up in the future. First off though, I wanted to say thank you to our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder. They have a community edition so you can go try it out for free. It's an IDE that gives you everything you need to build applications, and you can deploy to multiple platforms including Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. You can do this until you make a certain amount of profit from your applications with the community edition, so you don't have to worry about paying in order to launch your application or anything like that. One of the great tools with this IDE is a user interface developer that allows you to do drag and drop components and customize these for a particular platform you're trying to deploy to. It's very useful, go check it out, link in the description. Now, let's get back to cleaning up the language here. So the first thing, I'm going to get rid of this popback call. That's going to delete a character, which we don't want. And now what we're going to do is we're going to search for this language here. What we're going to do is say greeting.find and then put a string in here such as hell. Not hello, hell. <laughs> okay, so what this is going to do is it's actually going to return an index, meaning we have to do something with that value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut this and replace this nine with this function call. It should return the value nine, so it should work exactly the same way. So let's save and run. And you can see it worked. Awesome. So that is the basis for building a replacement system. You could make this a little bit more complex. For example, you could search for other words, and then you could basically extract it into a function saying, clean language and then throw in the string you're trying to clean bada boom bada bang you got the end result obviously there might be more than one use of a foul word inside of a string so if you're trying to replace multiple you're going to need loops which we're going to be talking about pretty soon but for now i want to go over some other functions you're going to run into so instead of using this foul language let's just say uh what is up <laughs> it's a little nicer the next method i wanted to talk about is substring so it's sub str and then inside of the parentheses, we are going to pass a position. So which index we want to start at. Let's say we want to grab the word is. That is at index five and it's two characters long. When we run this, we get the word is. This method is useful if you want to extract part of a paragraph, for example, rather than taking an entire paragraph or an entire string, we can just get a part of it. There's another function you might want to know, which is similar to the find function we just talked about. And that is find first of. The difference here is that find first of is going to search for any character in the string we give it. So let's just go through an example. What we're going to do is use find first of, and then we could pass in a string in here, such as the vowels. So any vowel that is in here is going to be found. So when we run this, we get the value two. That's because A is at the index two. If whatever we put in here is not found, let's say an exclamation mark, we get this huge number. <laughs> and what the heck does this mean? Well, this can be a little bit confusing, but I'll try to explain because you might run into this in the future. This number here is actually the equivalent to what's known as NPOS, which means it wasn't found. The reason NPOS gives us this huge number is because NPOS is actually negative one. When we call this find first of, it's going to return us the index, but this number is actually an unsigned long. So if we create a long variable and set that equal to negative one, but the thing is it's unsigned and an unsigned value can't store negatives, it's actually going to wrap around and give us one lower than the absolute max value, which is why we get that weird giant number. So you can see here, I'm going to output X. And when we run this, we get two exact values. The first one is this NPOS that's here. And then the second one is an unsigned long assigned negative one. So that explains why this weird number, but what exactly is NPOS used for? Well, it's actually used for testing. So later on, we can do if statements such as searching for characters and then see if that equals negative one. Like so, we're checking to see if it's negative one and if it is, we say not found. When we compile and run, we get not found. So that is how you use the NPOS. We just see if it's equal to negative one. If it is, then it's not found. So later on, you're going to wanna do string comparisons and we're often going to do that inside of an if statement. So you might see something like greeting equals equals, which is going to compare and then some other string. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this all in one line, do a C out that says equals. So when I run this, nothing happens. But if these are equal, like so, we should get the output equals. So you can see this double equals is used to compare the value of strings. The reason I'm bringing this up is because you will often see another way of comparing strings, and that is the dot compare method. So it looks like this. And then you put the other string inside of the argument, like so. If we output this, nothing happens, because what actually happens is this is going to return zero if it's equal, so we have to see if it's equal to zero. Yeah, it's confusing, I know. So now when we run it, we get equals. Okay, so let me break this down a little bit. There's two ways to compare strings. One is using the double equals operator. That's the best way to do it, and that's what I recommend. The other way is to use this compare method, which will return zero if they're equal. There are reasons you might wanna use the compare method because it'll actually tell you which string is considered first in the comparison by like the alphabet but most of the time you're not going to need that capability, so I recommend just using the equals equals operator. The other reason I bring up the compare function is because you might see this in other languages such as Java. In Java, you need to use the dot compare method, and you don't wanna use the double equals operator. In C++, when we use the double equals to compare strings, it's actually comparing the value, but in other languages, particularly Java, it compares the object to see if they are the same entity, which is different. So don't worry about it in C++, I'm only throwing that out there if you come from a Java background or if you think you'll be using Java in the near future. Dot compare is really important for Java, it's not super important for C++, and I would say the recommended way is just to use the double equals like so. Now this did go into some other stuff like if statements and comparisons that we haven't really talked about, so if you don't know what those are, don't worry about it, we're gonna be talking about it soon but just thought I'd throw that in here for completeness if you guys are jumping in this after you understand all that stuff. That's all I got for you guys for string methods. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about literals. It's a very good video, so please be sure to check it out and consider subscribing as it really helps out this channel. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.